Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 27th. First up, this was sent in to me by my friend Bangalore Babel, and this is, uh, I actually got two of these sent in, two uh, different internal combustion engines, but both based on opposed piston design. This first one is opposed piston, opposed cylinder design, and uh, this is from Engineer TV, engineeringtv.com. Yeah, engineeringtv.com. And as usual, I'll post links down below. This guy actually gives a demonstration of it here in a plexiglass enclosed model. Uh, so you can see how the pistons actually move. This is a two-cycle diesel engine, and it's a DARPA project. It's 300 horsepower in this one small module, and you can link up more modules for additional horsepower. And they're hoping to use it on all kinds of uh, military craft and stuff like that. There are actually functioning models. It's not just a prototype, and they're coming through uh, a lot of the test stages. So this may be something that's actually adopted by the military in the future. It's called the OPOC engine, opposed piston, opposed cylinder. And the other engine, which is similar, it's an opposed piston um, engine where they meet in the middle. This is from Fox News. This is, and as usual, the links will be down below. New internal combustion engine could boost electric cars. This is a replacement for conventional internal combustion engines, which are just um, being used for service in electric cars, but they're not specifically designed to be efficient that way. They're just uh, other engines that are already built that are just used in that place. Well, this one is a new design that uses a air spring for the pistons to return. So in other words, the pistons meet in the middle, the uh, combustion takes place, and then as they uh, go apart, air springs themselves actually cause them to bounce back. So they use that type of a device and it powers a generator. Uh, these run about 40 horsepower each and just like the other ones they can run on multiple fuels. Um, they can run, you can stack the modules too and get more horsepower out of them if you need that particular uh, extra horsepower. So this is kind of cool too. It's uh, maybe a little bit more life left in the internal combustion engine although as you know for me I'm uh, all for getting off the internal combustion engine and getting into fully electric as soon as possible but this may breathe a little bit more life into the internal combustion engine and definitely for military use and for heavy duty uses I mean the internal combustion engine will be around for a very long time it's only going to be in the lighter duty uses for uh, consumers that we're probably going to see fully electric vehicles be practical anytime soon and next up this is from let me get the name of the video here, HD Sportster Guy, and I contacted him about that. For some reason, it came up in my recommendations. I didn't even know about him before, but he is an astrophotographer. I got permission to use a portion of his video, and I'm only going to show a small portion because I want you to go to his video and check it out. He does some very good astrophotography, and he talks about how he does it and the equipment he uses, so it makes it for very interesting. So check out just a small portion of this video before you watch the whole thing. All right, so this first image is an image of our galaxy, basically. Um, it's the central region of our galaxy. It's, some call it the central bulge, and you'll see in the image Y, it's called the bulge. Um, it's pretty cool, you can make out a lot of the dust lanes. Um, of course, the stars, you can see some of the nebulous. Uh, they're usually like a pinkish or reddish um, in colors. You can see the image going look out for those. Um, I used an Olympus OM-1 camera body. Back in the day when you, you used film, you had to open the shutter for long periods of time to gather more light. So I mean, taking images in the dark is, uh, is an experience, challenging, um, and fun. So, but again, it's, it's the center region of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. And I hope you enjoy it. And next up, this is from Popular Science. I actually found this in my Popular Science magazine, and if you're not subscribed to it, one of the best values in a magazine you could get, about a dollar an issue if you uh, subscribe two years at a time. But this is at the, besides on the magazine, this is also at the popsci.com website. 2013 Invention Awards Cardboard Bike. This is from an Israeli engineer. I'll probably uh, goof up the name, but it's Izar Gafini. He, uh, just kind of like me, he looked at the bamboo bikes and then uh, looked at the prices they want for those bamboo bicycles, and man, they are expensive. So he decided as a uh, design to uh, design one out of a card out of cardboard, and he claims now this part I'm not really kind of believing it's going to take place. He claims he can build these for twelve dollars in material and sell them for thirty dollars. 
Um, I don't think there's any on the market right now, and there's no immediate plans for a date of when they would be on the market, but I'm kind of skeptical of that. Looking over at this itself, um, you're going to have to have some metal bearings in here. Looks like the pedals are made of metal. You got the, the neck the tubing where that's going to have to be some kind of a bearing. You got the brakes set up. I, to me, I'm seeing about $24 worth of parts even wholesale and a final price of probably $50 if that. I mean, it may be even a little bit more than that, but that's my guess on it. But still, compared to the price of the bamboo bikes, I think that's a pretty good deal. And then finally, I got something to show you guys here. This was sent to me. A few of you know about it. I let some people in on it, but... Um, my friend 54 Shadow sent me something. He's really into steampunk and retro gadgets, kind of like I am. Well, check this out, what he sent me. Now, this doesn't immediately look what you think it may be. It is an old antique camera from the late 30s, early 40s. I believe it's a Kodak Junior is what it's called. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool camera, but if you notice in back of it, let me turn it around here, it's got a wire sticking out. Reason being is because, I think I can get a shot up close enough here, reason being is inside it is a webcam. There is actually a regular webcam inside it, much like the one <coughs> that I'm using right now, that you see me using. It's pretty much the same exact design. It just has a, uh, mine's called an IM Connect, and I think this one's called a, a Logitech Zoom. But basically same shape, same design, same pickup. But yeah, and fully functional. I've tested it and tried it out, and it does work. I mean, the only thing um, is you do lose the audio because it's in the camera, so you won't be able to pick up any audio. But I don't typically use the audio from the webcams anyway. I mean, as you can see right here, I have my own microphone I'm using just for the better quality. So, so anyway, that's about it for this week, everybody. Take care. I will catch you next week.